Hey there YouTube, Super Brain AK here. And yeah. This is the I just got this in the mail. The Xtronic 6000 series it is the 6040. It is a hot air and soldering iron that is digitally controlled. You can set the temperature from 180 to 4 something. So yeah. Um, the It's got this little flip here for Celsius and Fahrenheit. Which I'll be probably using Celsius because it's what you use. <laughs> and then, yeah, pretty standard one, normal operation. I mean, a lot of things use the same kind of wand. And as you can hear, it's on and it's at 200 degrees Celsius. So, yeah. One thing I don't like is, let me flip it off. Is that the nozzle here is probably very easy to fall off because I can literally just turn this and then it's going to fall off. That's one complaint, but not necessarily a too terrible one. But that does seem to be a bit of a safety hazard since it's metal and retains heat. But yeah, pretty standard. Everything uses that. And then layout's pretty standard as well. But it's pretty good the I like the holder for the soldering iron all metal all metal even the sponge tray is metal and the iron itself I put the little bit of a larger chisel flat wedge I guess on it and then here's the handle I know some people complain that if you set it too high and leave it sitting for a while, this part will start to melt. I have, don't have it set that high, it's 300, which is high, but it is getting kind of warm. But anyway, yeah, I thought that I might share that. I do give you a plethora of iron tips. From super tiny there to big giant wedges. Oh, excuse me. Uh, little black tweezers. Icy puller. Kind of interesting. So, yeah. I'm going to take my hand at some desoldering, I guess. Um. I will get a hand at starting to do it and then I'll let you guys join in again. So I'll be back. I almost didn't show the sponge getting wet for the first time. <laughs> it's 
got this thing in the middle. I don't know why they punched that out. Well, that's sucking up a lot of water. Alright, that's pretty good. Much larger sponge than the other one that I have, which is the 3000 series, 3010, which just has a wattage adjustment. So, much, much smaller. Though, this has a little holder for um, cleaner scrubber. So, yeah. Shiny. Focus! Cool. Okay. Alright, so, after day or a couple of days I have figured out sort of how it works kind of need high temperatures if you want to remove something fast especially with double-sided boards especially this guy this guy was pretty annoying especially for the audio component here had a little amplifier because this is a uh, modem board not modem fax board from a printer phone line there and stuff so anyway desoldered a bunch of boards and turned them into that I got a whole ton of capacitors that's like mostly what everything is ton of ceramic capacitors um, fair number of resistors those condense pretty well <laughs> quite a few little inductors screws I don't know why they're ending up in my little parts bin of desolderedness and then LEDs Focus. Oh well. And then switches and fuses and plugs. So the really cool stuff are are the um, silicone. That's it. Big giant bridge rectifier there. Quite a few transistors, a um, what power supply sort of thing. Some surface mount MOSFETs, which came from this motherboard from a laptop. So I got three little chips here. I don't know if you can see the part numbers on them, but this one is the most awesome because that is paired with this guy, which this is a basically voltage um, management chip for um, processors. Little tiny, um, well, kind of old style. Where'd that motherboard go? Mm -hmm. There you go. This is from an old um, compact laptop. See the chips there and there's the socket. Inductor uh, diodes? No, capacitors. There are tantalums all around, which are all right there. Awesome. But that 
those two chips were sitting right here and the bigger one was for basically having the voltage good setting the voltage by um, serial pins and then the smaller chip was for actually man uh, switching the MOSFETs so those two paired together make an awesome voltage regulator for um, processors so I obviously kept those two a pair and yeah those other two are little, little ones a constant current constant voltage battery charger and then the other is a dual DC DC converter for 5 volts and 3.3 volts so yeah basically the three main ICs in the laptop and yeah and, oh yeah crystals <laughs> just because um so yeah kind of think that's it this thing works pretty great you just gotta set it to a high enough temperature and leave it on for just not long enough especially for the big power traces that go through the board which were the hardest they were kinda oh, well everything's over here I had to put it to like 400 C to um, desolder the uh, battery connector here the the plastic molding to separate the pins was starting to smoke <laughs> but I got it off but yeah, as you can see there's some pretty thick traces and ones that go through to the other side two big inductors so I probably should have removed the inductors first but oh well yeah it's a pretty cool motherboard rage mobility m1 graphics chip ti pci bus chip mm, some intel probably like south bridge where like this is the north bridge and yeah, north bridge south bridge something like that and I believe this is the super IO chip with like floppy management and stuff yeah pretty cool has a modem there I forget where that is in the pile but there wasn't anything good on it so yeah other things that I took apart that modem board from a printer two uh, boards from focus wrong way other way There we go. They're from um, wireless, Ethernet wireless um, uh, phones, cordless phones. This is the power management stuff. So I got a got three MOSFETs from that, and then there's a transistor here, and a bunch of zeners and capacitors, and barrel jack connector which is awesome the other half because it plugged in down here at the bottom here um, it's kind of the voice processing stuff that's the Ethernet fuse took that <laughs> and then there's an opto Coupler somewhere, I think right here. 
double optic coupler, and I think this is the, no, it was on the other board. This is actually a um, voice codec, DAC and ADC, kind of cool. So I believe this takes the input from this, or it's kind of transceiver from digital to this stuff to voice and then back to digital to actual over the line stuff. So that's kind of cool. I don't have any use for it, so I'm going to leave it on the board. But it's an ADC for voice. Another couple things. This one was kind of hard to desolder some stuff. Uh, as you can guess, it's a little router, a wireless router. Um, had a two voltage regulators and a bunch of LEDs. And then this had a blown capacitor, probably why it was thrown out, because it wasn't regulating. This part I'm going to keep because I'm probably going to cut it like that to keep the DC DC inverter part and obviously replace the output capacitor. Maybe with the tantalum. Yay! <laughs> Look! These are probably like DDR sodiums from that laptop. Um. Oh, there's that modem from the laptop. Does it have any voltage regulators? Nope. Tiny little flash memory and probably RAM. Awesome. Useless. And then this was what I was originally working on. Big TV motherboard. That's where the flyback was. And, yep, I completely cleaned it. Except for these two big chips, which I probably will never use. This is the main processor, and that's something else. Probably for video stuff, video processing. But, took everything else. And then including a few of the surface mount stuff that I'll probably never use though. Which, yeah, I don't even know what they are. I forget where I put those. They aren't included in here. I know that. But anyway, so, still quite a few more things to get cracking at, but I figured I might as well sort out my thing before it gets too full. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. See ya.